Hey, my friends, welcome back to Digital Charcuterie. My name is Andrew Fantasia, and we are still talking all about Marvel United Multiverse and all the goodies that keep getting unlocked. Just a little pre-video stuff uh, before we get started. If you've been enjoying these and keeping up with me and my crazy wish list, feel free to give this video a thumbs up and give love to that subscribe button and all that great fun YouTube stuff. And hey, if you think I'm all right and only mildly annoying, then maybe consider checking out my book that I wrote, Side Scroller, this is an action adventure book set in a world that runs on video game logic. And you can buy this right now on Amazon all over the world, apparently. I think all over the world. Maybe not Antarctica. I don't know. I'm just kidding. I love you, Antarctica. Buy my book too, please. But yeah, Side Scroller, it's there if you want to read it. Check it out. Now, with that out of the way, let's talk goblins. As you all know by now, Getting the Hobgoblin in this game is something I've been looking forward to for a long time. I didn't know if it was going to happen. I thought maybe he was too niche. I thought I was the only person who cared about seeing his glorious orange cape fluttering in the wind. But apparently there's no such thing as too niche when it comes to this game. Because the designers threw him in as a stretch goal. And we got him. He's here. We've got the Hobgoblin in all his beautiful orange glory. Look at that. Just look at that. I can't believe we're here right now. I can't believe I lived long enough to be able to have a Hobgoblin miniature in a board game. It's about damn time. It is going to feel so nice checking this name in particular off my list. Let's go to the list right now. Let's check him off. Ooh! You know what? That's really satisfying. Do you mind if, can we, can we just do that again? Like two more times? Uh-huh. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. That's the good stuff right there. So Hobgoblin's in this game. The one true goblin, as far as I'm concerned. Sorry, Green. You're cool, but you're no hob. And I was riding that high for a long time. I'm pretty much still riding that high. But as Friday rolled around and the live stream started to roll, I sat here content in my own little chair, thinking, knowing that Simon is going to give us something great, but nothing that they could possibly give us is going to top the high that I... the, the top... the... I'm sorry, Simon. What did you just say to me? Yeah. That's what I thought you said. This belongs to you now. It's yours. Oh. My. God, this box completely floored me. I can't remember the last time I yelped out loud in alarm reacting to something the way I did to this. This Maximum Carnage box is going to come with Carnage Challenge complete with the first ever die in any Marvel United anything, which is a special challenge you can add to any other game. It comes with a new Sinister Six mode with six new villains. Shriek, Scream, Demo Goblin, Doppelganger, Morbius, and Scorpion, all of whom can also be played separately. And to top it all off as the Kickstarter exclusive bonus, you get a module that lets you make your own Sinister Six in any combination you choose. You basically have access to a Sinister Six salad bar. Simon, I already told you this is yours, right? This no longer belongs to me. I wash my hands of it. I mean, what else can I say here? Love at first sight is real, and it's this Maximum Carnage expansion from Marvel United Season 3. I scroll through this and I just can't stop smiling from ear to ear. This is all incredible stuff. The first Sinister Six box was definitely the best expansion of Season 1. So for them to double down on that 
and then literally double down on that by once again offering that expansion to people who missed out on it the first time, which is so nice of them to do. I, I don't think I have words for how great this is. And of course, we finally get Scorpion and Morbius, two characters that were on my list. Morbius was one of the ones in my top five most wanted characters. Let's check them off. Scorpion and Morbius are here. They're beautiful. They've been added to the roster. Morbius is an anti-hero because of course he is. One of the very, very few Marvel comics that I own and have read is the series of Maximum Carnage. And more importantly, my best friend and I grew up as little kids playing the game on Sega Genesis, which took us like 20 years to beat because it's so damn hard. Hopefully this game won't be as hard. So Maximum Carnage is a place right here. It lives here rent-free. And the idea of not only getting it as an expansion, but having it come with these characters that I love in it and seeing people like Doppelganger. The thought that Doppelganger is in this game, I just... I never expected to get here. I never expected to be sitting here in this world where I'm sitting right now. And Demo Goblin, I thought the Hobgoblin mini was cool and sexy and nicer than the Green Goblin mini. And then along comes Demo Goblin to be like, hold my pumpkin flavored beer because you ain't seen nothing yet. My glider's made of fire. There are no words. There are no words. All I can do is try to apply cold logic to it because even though it's something I hate doing, it's the best thing I can do in this situation here. So Demo Goblin and Doppelganger, when they're separate as a separate villain, they actually work as a pair because Doppelganger is more of, you know, an animal that Demo Goblin keeps on a leash. So that's a villain right there. Shriek is a villain. Scream is a villain. Scorpion and Morbius. Then you've got Morbius as a hero. You've got the Carnage challenge mode. You've got the Sinister Six mode, the new Sinister Six mode. And then you've got the Sinister Six make your own Sunday bar mode. That's nine different games in one little old box. I don't know what's happening tomorrow for their final announcement, but you, there's no walking away from this. This is the creme de la creme. I better move on before I have some kind of coronary here. But yeah, that's Maximum Carnage. And it is beautiful. It is absolutely beautiful. And apparently I'm not the only one who thought so. Because the uh, profits started rolling in again. And we unlocked Megan. Who apparently was the last character we needed to fill out the Excalibur roster. So me being a happy Spider-Man villain fan right now, I can stand now on the sidelines and cheer for all the Excalibur fans out there because they were asking for Megan and they got Megan. They unlocked Megan pretty easily thanks to a certain red symbiote man and his certain nasty friends. And then speaking of red people, once Megan was unlocked, we slid right into the final member of the Winter Guard, Red Guardian, an anti-hero I'm actually surprised I didn't put him on my list because I tended to put a lot of the MCU characters on my list because I just wanted to see them in the game. But he's here, and now that he's here and he's revealed, they finally told us how the villain game works for Winter Guard. And it works like this. Red Guardian, Ursa Major, and Dark Star work together as a team of three. You have to stop them all. They're doing different things. Red Guardian is interrogating you. Ursa Major is just destroying things, Dark Star is making her damage unpreventable, and you've got to keep them from furthering their interrogation plot, or however it works. And you can also add a separate module, if you like, where after you fight them, you can fight Crimson Dynamo as a final Winter Guard boss, uh, carrying over any tokens you might have, but also adding to his villainous plot, depending on how far the Winter Guard's interrogation track went up. So thematic different ways to play the game. I'm curious now, I don't know if I'm this good at math, but I would love it if somebody out there could count up all the different modes and methods that Marvel United has once all of this is out and released and said and done and in our hands and just see what the numbers look like on that. How many different ways can you play through Marvel United before you've played everything? So the Red Guardian anti-hero got unlocked and following on his footsteps is another villain the High Evolutionary, who we are going to see coming up in Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. But the High Evolutionary comes with a surprise twist, and if you didn't want it spoiled, I won't spoil it here for you. But there is a sort of twist to his 
villain story where when you get to a certain point and clear a certain threat or whatever, something changes. And the thing that changes, without being spoilery, is interesting because it kind of calls out a character that some people have wanted and basically says, we can't give you this character on their own, but here they are as part of the High Evolutionary. I don't know if these two characters ever intermingled in the comics. I'm sure they probably did. But it was really surprising to see these two mixed up. I'm still flabbergasted by how different every villain is this year. And I'm talking all the villains they've announced in Multiverse. They all sound like three times as hard as every villain that we've had so far in the first two seasons. Except maybe like Rhino and Juggernaut, because those guys are like super hard. But there's a lot of different stuff going on. Nothing is as straightforward as it was in season one. I'm really loving the complexity and it's getting even more complex as we go. But more on that later. After the High Evolutionary, we got our uh, expected cardboard stuff. The locations and the villain dashboards. I never got these last time, but I was tempted. I was really tempted. I, I just, I cut back on what I was spending and I didn't get the dashboards and the locations, but God, they look beautiful. I bet they feel nice and sturdy. And considering how often I play the game, it would be nice to have sturdier components. So I think this time I'm going to cave and get those components because uh, they just look really, really cool. By the way, the Maximum Carnage box has a Statue of Liberty location and her head is a chibi too. Seriously, can, can we give that Maximum Carnage thing like all the awards? Even Oscars. Just give them Oscars. Tar doesn't need to win a gold statue this year. That box does. After the cardboard stuff, we unlocked another team deck. This one for S.H.I.E.L.D., which is surprising because we never really think of S.H.I.E.L.D. as a team, do we? But they absolutely are. So it'll include both Nick Furies, Maria Hill, Quake, Captain America, uh, you know, a bunch of other characters who I forget, but they're all going to be part of the S.H.I.E.L.D. team. I think these team decks are really fun. I'm really curious to try them out and see what they feel like. So adding another one to the mix, the more the merrier. And finally, after the S.H.I.E.L.D. deck, we unlocked a character that I thought was likely to see, but as the campaign went on, I found it less and less likely to the point where I stopped even considering him. And that was Deathlock, one of the most 90s characters ever made, because he's a cyborg man. All he's missing is chains and a bunch of belt straps. So technically Cable is the most 90s character ever made. But the 90s was when I was introduced to Marvel through trading cards and through cartoons. So Deathlock was kind of inescapable back then. He was like every trading card set I got, I ended up with a Deathlock. Even if it was like totally unrelated, like a Spider-Man set. Hey, here's a card where he teams up with Deathlock. And I'm like, wow, Deathlock's everywhere. So to see him in here is a beautiful little addition because he feels kind of like an asset. He feels like an invaluable asset, an invaluable part of Marvel, especially because the art design of this game, particularly season two, is really 90s heavy, which I really like. So the idea of having Deathlock in there is a no-brainer. And I put him on my list. So he gets a nice little green cross next to him to signify that he has been unlocked. And boom, there we go. And now here we are at last on the Sunday before the campaign ends, one day before our final video conference with Helena and Andrea and Tiago to talk about how things are going to culminate. And as it stands, we are waiting to unlock another villain. Thankfully, we're getting villains again. Enchantress. Now, this is weird because clearly I've been thinking too much. I've had too much Marvel United on the brain because I literally had a dream last night that Enchantress was the next character to be unlocked. And it's weird because I don't have her on my list. Like, I don't care if she makes it or not. She wasn't anybody who was on my radar. So I'm not saying I'm psychic, but I'm also not not saying I'm psychic. And the thing about Enchantress that is interesting, and I've seen a lot of people bring this up in the comments as well, is that she enchants people. That's her thing. You know, it's kind of why she's called what she's called. So she is going to steal henchmen from other villain decks and make them work for her, which is a brilliant concept that is super thematic for Enchantress. She all, obviously she comes with Scourge, the Executioner, as her own personal henchman, because if she didn't, there would be riding in the streets tomorrow. But she also has to steal from other villains. And a lot of people have brought up that it's a little bit inconvenient for them because they have to go digging through all the other decks and not every villain has henchmen so they gotta really dig and find henchmen and I understand that particularly the way I have my setup where 
I'm weird and I keep all the original boxes because I just love them so much. That's going to be tricky when Enchantress comes up to pull all the henchmen. Luckily, given the way that I play, which is completely picking characters at random, if she comes up, obviously I'll have heroes picked and I will just go to that box that hero came from, open that box, and because it'll already be open, and just take whatever henchmen I can from those. So I'll find a way around it. Ten henchmen is asking a lot, though. That's tricky. Like, even somebody like Kingpin, who you would imagine Kingpin would be nothing but henchmen, because that's what he does. I found it really strange when I first cracked open Kingpin and he only had one henchman. So it's going to be interesting to see what people, you know, how creative people get to work their way through that. But I do think it's a really thematic, interesting way to handle Enchantress. Uh, and I applaud Andrea for coming up with it. So there we are. That's where we leave off right now on the Marvel United front. There's like less than three days to go or something like that before the campaign ends. As far as predictions, what do I think we're going to see tomorrow? Well, part of this is wishful thinking on my part and part of this is trying to apply logic to something, but there was that one story deck uh, what do they call it? The campaign decks. Sorry. There was that one campaign deck that was not revealed yet and still has not been revealed. There's a little silhouette in the top of that deck and it's green and the outline of the character is very big and muscular. So a lot of people have been speculating that it's something Hulk related and I think that's going to be the case. I think we're going to get, because it just makes sense with everything we've seen, how story based all the expansions have been, I think we're going to get a World War Hulk expansion. However, like the other expansions, it's going to play a little bit fast and loose with who's in it. Because here's the thing, Scorpion and Scream were not part of Maximum Carnage. They threw them in there as a nice little bonus. They have nothing to do with that story. And it's been a long time since I've read Civil War, so I could be totally wrong, but I'm pretty sure Kate Bishop and Wonder Man didn't play giant parts in that either. So with that in mind, here's what I think we're going to get. Let's see how close I can get here. We're going to get a World War Hulk box with a new version of the Hulk. We've already got new versions of Captain America and Iron Man and Havoc, so we know they're doing this and they're finally doing it. So let's say we get a new improved version of the Hulk that's just called, you know, World War Hulk. And, you know, he has a better deck than the Season 1 Hulk. We'll say that this box will come with the leader, as a villain, because he's still waiting in the wings. Let's say it comes with Scar. I think that's his name. Hulk's son with the weird hair. Scar, is that what he's called? Uh, let's say he gets thrown in there. Let's also add, just because it would make me happy, um, Doc Samson, A-Bomb, and Red She-Hulk. And you've got a whole bunch of new Hulk characters that I would love to see thrown into that mix. I don't think that's exactly what we're going to get, but in a perfect Andrew world, trying to align with what Simon is doing, that seems like the safest bet. And then those campaign cards will obviously be part of the World War Hulk campaign. I know not all those characters, in fact, most of those characters probably did not participate in the World War Hulk story, but c'est la vie. And that's the end of the road for now, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're as excited as I am for the culmination of this Kickstarter like I am. I hope I don't end up forgetting to pledge because I've been just biding my time and waiting for the all-in. So if I forget to pledge, I'm going to be kicking myself all year. But that is that. I will see you all next time for whatever comes next and last in the Master Plan.